Yeah. Oh, where was, where was, uh, what? <laughs> I wasn't listening. You want to grab a seat, Dad? Marketing promo? I don't know anything about that. Uh, that's a marketing promo, too. They're all marketing promo. The, the biggest thing you guys need to know about Facebook right now is that their algorithm is just now changing to where your your pages are not going to be seen organically. Mm -hmm. So if you want to be in front of people on Facebook, you're going to have to pay for it. You're going to have to do targeted ads and put money behind it. Otherwise, you're just going to you're never going to get seen. And I think that's the biggest thing that a lot of people don't realize. They know they have the market, so they're going to yeah. charge for it. They're it's capitalizing on it. Well, and, and not only that, but they want their user. They want they don't want the everyday user to to get tired of going on Facebook because all they're seeing is advertisements. is advertisements or well, business business pages. Now, yeah, they're, they're getting money for it, so that's the only thing. But, As a matter of fact, that's what's stopping me from going on Facebook. Well, it's because they get bombarded with ads, which never was the case. Yeah, and that's what they don't want. And so if you're if you're combining that if you're combining paid advertisements with 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 just normal page posts. And all you're seeing is business stuff in the feed. You're going to stop using Facebook. So now they're saying, okay, well, we're going to take away the organic stuff, and we're only going to show the people in the fo in the feed yeah. that's being paid for, which makes perfect sense. Yeah, reduce the commercials like it did on Craigslist. But listen, like it's there's no better way to get, in, in my opinion, like I, I understand every market's different. You got newspaper, you got print, radio, and and that stuff might work for your particular market. But there's no way to put your ad in front of somebody's face better than Facebook. Mm -hmm. It's just, I can I can go and say, okay, within this radius of my store, between 18 and 24, I can say, I can even say if they make over X amount of dollars in income. I mean, there's so much that you can do with Facebook marketing to make sure that the ad is only being seen by a very, very specific demographic of customer. Yeah, like and you can only RV do that with Facebook. People, you can even get it down to RV people. Yeah, yeah, well, or by like groups, whatever they like. You can do anything you want. You uh, want to do women. The targeting women, is 20, targeting 20, is so great. You want to do 50 to 60. See, here's the thing, like, if you guys get wind of something, like, getting it early is, is a good thing. So, I was one of the first companies in Gainesville advertising on Instagram, and I freaking crushed it. I mean, crushed it. I just had, I would promote posts, and we were the only ones, the only paid advertiser in Gainesville. And it was just, the people were just tagging us, or tagging their friends, and I was getting so much traffic. I spent, like, $200 on an Instagram ad that brought me tons and tons of scooter sales and it was in a slower time of the year too it was like an october november time of the year for us so but the reason that worked so well was because we were the only ones doing it at the time that now everybody's doing it so it's it's flooded the thing that's really really hot right now it's a little bit more difficult with the creative because you got to do videos but you know snapchat stories instagram stories like i spent fifty dollars on snapchat stories i get thirty thousand impressions i mean i've never even heard of that so the, the uh, and that's great from an awareness standpoint. I'm getting, I can target, I can target students. So I'm getting 30,000 students seeing my ad in 24 hours for 50 bucks. It's like you crazy. Your videos or something that you did like in an apartment complex and like then you get all those floors too when you do an ad Snapchat. That's, that's different. So that's a filter. So you ever see the filters where you like slide left and right? Because you did a filter. So I did a filter and I set it on top of an apartment building that's like really, really tall. So now I'm getting all the floors and so stuff like that. And if you make it fun, you know, if you're not going to, I'm not going to put a filter on there that says like new scooters for less. Nobody's going to use that. But if I put one on there, like I did one one time that was like, um, it was a picture of a scooter and it said, and it said thug life on it. Right, and it had like scooter, and then and it got used so much, like over and over and over and over, and, and creating that filter and putting that on there was was really really awesome. If you look, if you like watch Instagram stories and you watch Snapchat ads, most of them are are national companies. Most of them are national national companies. So be the local company. If you're the local company, you're the only local company doing it. The impressions are incredible, man. I'm getting like like I said, thirty thousand overnight for fifty bucks, and it's only college students. Like it's a no brainer. I think a very important thing to, re to remember when it comes, so a lot of people, and I want to make sure this is clear here because I see so, too many businesses make this mistake, is that they start using, they think that face, they fa Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, they think all these social media platforms are to do nothing but promote their brand. Like I want to promote, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to bring in business, promote, 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 right? And I talk about this all the time. 
Um, if you change your mindset and you think more long term and you think, okay, let me start using social media as a customer service platform. Like, let me use Snapchat to show my customers their scooter being worked on. Let me take a 10 <laughs> second Snapchat. Let me do that, send that. Let me, uh, uh, customers, I hand out those business cards with the Snapchat code, right? Customers will say, hey, Colin, I was just curious, like, when's my next service? Yeah. And they'll just send me a snap and I'll just respond to it. Hey, you're like, your next service is due at this, huh. yada, yada. And so I use social media all the time, Twitter, Instagram, you know, Snapchat, all of these platforms to deliver what we call at our shop, the UCE, the ultimate customer experience, right? We're using it as customer service platforms and then that helps it grow organically to right. where they're reaching out to me all the time. I'm building those relationships. Those relationships lead to the ultimate marketing tool, which is word of mouth. They yeah. start telling their friends and then that's what leads to more business. Trustworthy, friendly face at this yeah. point. I mean, so yes, so yes. Make it look like an ad. Make it look at something no, that can be of value to the do customer. targeted ads. Right. You know, make Facebook posts on your page. Do all of this stuff, but don't there. don't make it don't make it about like Straight shoving your business. brand down people's throats. Yeah. Make it about building a relationship with your customers, and that's what leads to the long term relationships that bring in people from word of mouth. So one of the biggest things that we do. <laughs> When it comes to your brand and the, like, it's about the value that you're providing, yeah. right? So when you buy when you buy a scooter from us, like, we might not necessarily always be the cheapest. Now I'm try, I'm always competitive. Like yeah. I like, I want to make sure that we're providing the best service, best rates, best price, everything, right? So I'm super super competitive in that regard. But at the same time, like, I'm giving you more value in our name. So the fact that you're buying a scooter from New Scooters for less, like, you get a discounted labor rate. So our labor rate is eighty dollars an hour. I'll service your, but just you're gonna pay a hundred dollars an hour. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know. So so we do that. So we're we're basically rewarding the people who bought from us. Yeah. You buy a scooter from us, you get free pickup and free delivery on your scooter. You get a nail in a flat tire, and your you know you get a nail in your tire. You have a flat. You just call us. We pick it up. It's free. It's included. Now you're still paying to replace the tire, mm -hmm. but the pickup is free. All right, I'm giving. I do free pickups within five so, miles. Yeah. So, so I'm doing that. Thirty dollars or so. Yeah. If a uh, if a customer, if we have to order a, a part and it's a warranty part, or the the scooter comes in under warranty basically, and and our customer is going to be without their scooter, then we give them a rental for free to use while we're waiting. I've been thinking about doing that okay. As well. So we do that. So, so these are things. These are things that you get just by buying a scooter from us. It's included right. in the logo. Right. Not only that, but when you buy that scooter from us and you're a college student, four years later, you're about to graduate, and you sell it to somebody else, and you go sell it to her, yeah. now she gets all that stuff. That's it doesn't stay with you, it stays with the scooter, stays with the logo, it stays with the brand. Okay. So that gives you, that gives her value in buying a new Scooters for Less used scooter. scooter. Yeah. That gives you more value, because you should be able to get a little bit more for a new Scooters for Less yeah. scooter, because you're providing all that extra value that comes with it. It's just about providing value in your brand. And I'm gonna ask you and everybody around the table, when you price your in an individual unit. Do you price it saying to yourself, I'm not coming off of that a penny? I mean, because my car business background says, if I price them a little higher, I'm gonna get that on most of them, but if I need to come off of that price 50 bucks, I can. What's your strategy? It sounds to me like you put your lowest price out there. I, I throw out that extra value. I, I mean, I even, so I have people who will contact me, uh, they'll buy, they'll even be out of town, like, I don't know, they'll be in Orlando, and they'll be like, hey, the scooter is down here for $9.99, I see that you sell it for $10.99, like, will you match this price? We and, I'll, a lot. And, I, and I'll be like, well, just these are the things you need to think of. As soon as you have a warranty issue, you're gonna have to take it back down to Orlando, but your daughter's gonna be using it here. You buy a scooter from me, I'm gonna pick it up for free, deliver it for free, it's included in the price. I'm gonna be, you're gonna get a discounted labor rate if you buy it down in Orlando and you bring it up here, I'm gonna charge you $100 an hour every time it needs to be worked on. By buying it from me, you're getting it for $80 an hour. So like, I tell them that value that they're gonna right. be getting. You don't think that's worth 100 bucks over Absolutely. four years? You're gonna lose they're you're like, the first call. can you do the pickups for life of the, the owner? For the life of the vehicle. Wow. Even if it's transferred to Even another if it's person. transferred to wow. another person. Because it's given the value in our brand. It's, again, it's just, it's providing the value. You know, it, it's. It's reputation. Yeah. It's it's. I need to know as a parent if my daughter breaks down on the side of the road and I'm three hours away that you six are going miles, to be there. Six miles. Like I need to know that as a parent. And and we do that and like I mean when I 
if mom and dad are standing there as the, as the young lady is about to get her scooter and I walk up to them and I give them my business card and I say, this is my Snapchat code. Yeah. Every single one of them smiles because they know exactly what it is before I tell them what it is, right? She smiles and I say, seriously, if you ever have a problem, you ever need anything, you contact me directly. It goes directly to me. Okay, and, I and then I deliver. Really appreciate that. Like they really, really do. Right, and so mom and dad do. They they overhear yeah. that conversation, uh -huh. and they might not necessarily go and scan it and follow me right then and there. They'll they'll keep it inside their scooter seat. The first time they hear a funny noise that they're not too familiar with, they'll take that little 10 second snap, and they'll say, Hey, Colin, you said I could reach out to you if I ever needed to. Like, hopefully you get this. Um, I heard this sound. Is this normal? And then and then I respond, right? I'm like I'm like, oh yeah, it's like it sounds like, you know, your exhaust might be a little loose or your license plate is vibrating or something, you know, I'll be like, so I think you're okay, but swing by the dealership in the morning or or if it's concerning, I'm like, no, leave leave your scooter, we'll pick it up tomorrow. Right. And it won't cost and them a thing. Send you a snap video of what's going on. Okay, Sometimes my mechanics or whoever, when they come in the door, they sigh and drag their feet. I, the, your employees are always smiling, they're happy, bright color, good work environment, great team morale. What are you doing to keep it that way? I give a damn it's about it. It's not just money. And I, yeah, I know, exactly. It, that's, yeah, but he, it, it ain't, he, this is what I was up till 2.30 with him learning last night. Yeah. You guys, this is, it call. isn't a secret sauce. Like, right. give a damn. Yeah. Ask, ask them quite, like, what do you, where do you want to be in 10 years? What do you want out of this life? What are your goals? How can I help you get there? Well, Even if that's not with me, yeah. if that's with somebody else. Okay, if they, if they if they tell me that they want to go to college, or, yeah, you know, like well, if they tell me that I want to be I want to be an Audi mechanic, yeah. working on Audi. Okay, great. Like let's reverse engineer. That. Let's figure out how to get how there. you know how he was saying start with the bottom line. I want to make this amount of money, right? Like yeah. we're going backwards with that. Same thing. Like okay, yeah. you want to be an Audi mechanic. How are we going to help you get there? Get there. Does that suck for me as a business owner? Because I'm going to lose a great tech. Yep. Yes. But because I'm invested in them and their future and their goals, they're going to give me the best. They're going to give me the best. They're going to they're going to give me their best while they work for me because they respect me, man. My brother is now service manager. And one of the things that I was very impressed about him doing was he got he pulled the team together and said, "Guys, we're at about a two week wait. What I would like to do is pay everybody a couple hours of overtime and let's stay after on Tuesday nights and Thursday nights and bang it out with no distractions, no phones ringing, no customers walking in the door. Let's focus a couple hours." And so, so he started doing that. That was on him like he was service manager he made that call and I was like all right yeah way to go I would rather pay my team members who are dedicated to their team I would rather give them a couple hours of overtime and let them do the work versus bringing on another technician you know so like you have to just gauge that more too because our techs are hungry for money they want more money you know what I mean and they're willing to do whatever they got to do to get it so you have to you just have to gauge that stuff but I, I really feel like a lot of people just overthink it like if you genuinely care like I love every single person that works for me love them with all my heart and it reciprocates dude they they do everything I mean they are they are they are the reason we are who we are today and I know that and I'm nothing without any of my team and that's why in turn that's why you can also sell here's what I learned from you last night I love and care about my people I thought mistakenly that I was showing that to them, and you used an example of, hey boss, my buddy got tickets to go to a concert tonight, I need off two hours early, and you said, yeah, I want to be that nice guy, so yeah, no problem, so that's me. See, I didn't take it to that next step of holding them accountable to get somebody to cover their shit, to sit down and help them with their, I mean, I was showing them in. That's the values, right? It was hurting me, not helping me. It's a, I don't know, it's a fun business. I just love business in general. Like, I've, I've owned a couple companies, and, I, and now I'm like, I'm in commercial real estate now, and there's a lot of things that are uh, changing who I am as an entrepreneur for sure, and on a much on a much deeper scale. Um, but it, it, it's amazing how simple it can be. I mean, you like I think we all tend to overthink it, but it's really just about giving a damn. Yeah. <laughs> you give a damn about your team members. You give a damn about your customers. You know, like we get a bad review, like I'm I'm diving all in to try and figure out what the hell happened mm -hmm. because I care. Like I, I, I would rather get a bad review than not get a review at all because at least I know that there was a problem and I can learn from it and I can fix it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and a lot of people don't have that perspective. You know, they, I don't want anybody talking behind my back. Talk, talk to me to my face. Do it in a, do it in a review, and then and then we try to use it as opportunities to educate customers by getting on video and by saying, if you ever have a problem, I'm right here. 
don't don't feel like you have to hide behind social media. Don't feel like you have to hide behind a, a Google review. I'm right here. I'm right. the owner of the company, and I will be happy to help you any way that I possibly right. can. And so we use video and these things to educate our customers and say, look, like we're right here. Like we give a damn. We we we, we care about you and your business. This right. is my baby. This, right. We go. We work our butts off. Yeah. This is this. These are our. This business is our baby. So like you, you think I don't want to take care of you as a, my customer? Of course I do. Right. I love you. You're the reason we are who we are. Yeah. yeah. And Scott says that you don't have to threaten me. He'll say to customer, you don't have to threaten me to make to get me to do the right thing. Right. Because that's what my goal is. Yeah. Right. But, exactly. You know, I mean, that's where I'm here. Some people come in and try to push you around, right? From or it's that's do the Facebook best. negative review yeah. and then yeah. say, you know, you don't have, you didn't have to go that way. You just reach out to me and I'll right. take care of it. We can make it right. Well, and the reason, and I don't blame customers because the reason they do that is because they feel like nothing is going to get done. And that's because that's the way it is in 90% of the businesses in the world. So, so I mean, you don't have one of those one man, like, I'm only interested in doing my thing and do, do you it's get to be a team? Do you yeah. get those people? Sure. Oh, and when yeah. we and when yeah. we do, like, I sit down with them and I say, right. that's, that's not living up to the core values right. of the company. Right. If you keep doing that, you're not going to be around very long. Right. Because that's you know, not this what is we're a, looking for. Right. Even though you're a great tech and you hit that 70, but you're not hitting the other metrics that we consider important. I used this example last night when I was talking to him. There's com this is why everything is so screwed up in corporate America. Because in corporate America, you'll have you'll have a company. Of, Fortune 500 company or any any company that they, and they say they have core values and these are our core values and like treat treat everybody with kindness or like that'll be a core value and then you'll have some you'll have some sales guy who is like crushing it two mil the guy brings in two million dollars yeah. like he's doing but he's an asshole to everybody mm -hmm. right but but I'm as the company I'm not gonna let him go because he's bringing in two million dollars like he's crushing yeah. it. and and so what you're saying there is that the money. Was more is more important. important than the values of the company, right. and everybody knows it. Yep. Right. Everybody knows it. So your company is and nobody. Morale's no down. morale's down. That guy's a cancer. Everybody's He's an asshole. Right. And, like the, and the company he gets paid more than us. Yeah. yeah. And, and the company the needs company. to. The company needs to say, like, dude, like, you either don't be an asshole mm -hmm. or you're gone. Yeah. No matter how much money you're bringing in. Mm -hmm. right. But they won't do that because they look at the $2 million in sales.